we're here. here That's we a are. pretty cool screen you made there, Kenny. Pretty neat, huh? It's pretty nice. nice. And then yeah. we can count down with fireworks. Yeah, baby, it's on brand. Oh, it's oh, on shit. brand. I'm the, I'm the guy. I got the phone up loud. My of course bad. You do. Hello, world. Hello. Hello. Hello, and welcome to the Freemasons podcast oh, <laughs> with your hosts, right, Worship Brother George Mudry. Worship Brother Joe. And Worship Brother Ken. Today's episode 191, we are covering Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol book. Mm-hmm. I read this book. It was phenomenal. But the reason why is because somebody sent me a youtube trailer of what uh of the this new show or yeah, movie coming to your peacock network. coming to mm-hmm. peacock so uh ken you actually can uh bring this up i can do that let's watch the trailer and let's do that. oh this is fancy oh you fancy now when yes. it comes to symbols of the we past there are still oh, a lot of wow. people who ascribe yeah, extra natural powers oh, to come symbols. on no, I just, just rewind, Kenny. full screen that baby, and then we'll go there. When it comes there to symbols go. of the past, there are still a lot of people who ascribe extra natural powers to symbols. Sign of the cross, number 13. Luck symbols, bad luck Trade symbols. TV 14. At what oh. point, though, Thank God that it's not the Tom Hanks. Malignant. Yeah. You're one of the sharpest I've ever had. I don't mind. I don't want to watch it yet. Ryan, so that can only take you so far. Yeah, he's Here. like this generation. This is going to be life-threatening. I would have just <laughs> gone to the library. <laughs> Professor Langdon? I was expecting Peter. It's pretty high production, though. It, it is. Yeah. Hello? No, I'm really going to solve the great mystery. Yeah. Have you read it? Yes. Yeah. I actually did a little... Peter, uh, we'll point the way. Refresher. That's Peter's yes. last. The yes. hand of mystery. As above, which is all below. Catherine, something's happened. It's your dad. He's been taken. I don't know exactly what's going on. No, for sure. We're going to get into it. I teach symbology. I expect you'll find the sun, a lantern, and a key. The hand of the cool. mystery. Yeah, so. Did this person say what he wants? He wants me to locate an ancient portal buried within this the capital. This part's cool. This part's cool. And unlock it. How's your Latin? Not as good as my Oh, name. okay. He's in the collection. Okay. Did you happen to put that key back? You mean this? Security guards no, no one told me to put it back. I think it was gonna be that easy. Did you? There's a purpose to everything he's done. The world wants to be deceived. So let it be deceived. Scotty and tattoos. tattoos. Yeah, we're gonna get into that in a minute, but very cool. Yeah, that was cool. neat. Shut it down. Yeah. Get rid of it. Back anyway. to studio only, baby. Yep. Nice job, Ken. Yeah, nice job, Ken. Hey, we, 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 nice. I mean, George had uh, make sure that shit ain't playing. Set no up to. I don't think it's playing anymore. All right. So anyway, we're so. gonna get into Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. I've read. I didn't read The Da Vinci Code. I watched the movie, but I did read Angels and Demons, which was really, really good. Yeah. And I read, I read The Lost Symbol, which was a fin. I, I like The Lost Symbol better than Angels and Demons, and uh, me personally. Um, there's books are so much better than the freaking movies, so I hope that they don't like cut a lot out of the book in this movie show series. Well, I think it's going to be a series, so hopefully they could take their time yeah. with it. Yeah, I yep. hope they take and, their time uh, with it. But. Like the good old-fashioned 1980s miniseries. Yeah, I'm sure there'll like still dark be some, shadows. some creative <laughs> uh, choices made, you know, stuff that they pull out for creative reasons, but I, I mean, hope so. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no shortage of time when you're doing a miniseries. I hope they do it that way, yeah. where they don't cut anything out because the book was awesome. But anyway, mm. let's do likes, do some housekeeping. Okay. You want to do Instagram first? Fire away. Okay. Over on Instagram, we've got Brandon Sanders, Herbert Nelson, James Purvis, Lucas Gabar, and Carson. Thank you, brothers and friends. He just has one name, Carson? Just Carson. Uh, Carson, oh, Carson Shetrumpf. Oh. That's the best I can do. Sorry. Wait, what? Sorry, my friends. Shetrumpf? What the hell was that? Shetrumpf. Oh, okay. Shetrumpf. I believe it is German. Grow up. I believe so. I will never grow up. That's all I got. I don't, I see don't any, want to uh, grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. No new reviews as far as I can tell. Let me yeah, do a quick Stop growing around 12, I'm betting. Nice. Very nice. You all right today? Yeah, why? <laughs> I'm drinking a beer that's like the total opposite of you. It's called Nimble Giant. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> let's go to YouTube. Yeah, more like a lazy midget. Let's go to YouTube. <laughs> 
Yeah. Tro Eggs probably makes one of those too. Well, Ken throwing out the M- new subscribers. Yeah. Chuck Allen. Hi, uh, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. John Doyle. Oh, Doyle rules. Uh, Marcus Archibleek. Oh shit! I touched something. Oh my god! I touched something. Oh, and it wasn't no. me this time. Yeah, I'll go with Archibeck. 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 All right. And uh, Ryan Hacker. For it's everybody. Like Archibeck. Cool name. What? It's cool like name. Archibeck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, um, We're such children. <laughs> we really are. Um, so, uh, for everybody please, uh, who's liked and subscribed to uh, us on YouTube, please smash the like button and click on the little bell so you know when we go live. Mm-hmm. And uh, we appreciate it. We're on our way to, we're trying to get to 1,000 so we can start doing little short clips and surveys and stuff like that. So if you are watching or you're watching later when we're not live, please subscribe to us. It helps us out tremendously. Smash that like button and subscribe to us. We appreciate it. So, brethren, right hand to arms. To To arms. arms. Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire, good fire, fire all. Together, brothers. Vivat, vivat, vivat. Maybe that was a little heavy. We got to stop leaving the uh, bourbon in the sun. (laughs) God, man. It's like like sun. It enhances the alcohol where it burns more. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's because it's hot. (laughs) Maybe it's the Morning Star boys coming up here and poisoning us. They're adding bleach to it or something. It's probably just (laughs) adding water to it and taking some of the booze out. That means it's working. Like mom's liquor cabinet. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to get into the book of the lost symbol. I'm going to pull this off of Wikipedia if you haven't read the book yet. Spoiler alert! Oh, oh boy. Cliff notes. George is reading. Yeah. So this book was released on September 15th, 2009. It's the third of the uh, third of his um, books regarding with uh, Robert Langdon as the main character. Tom Hanks played the first two. This one is not Tom Hanks. Cool. Nobody talks like that. <laughs> yes, they do. Nobody knows what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, yeah, they but do. it's uh, the the final installment, I guess, after the Da Vinci Code in that series. Uh, book was awesome, and Angels and Demons came out, and I could not wait for that for the Lost Symbol to come out. And then they skipped over it and went to Inferno, and I was pissed about that. Yes, mm. I um, haven't read Inferno. I have not read Inferno because I, I was it, angry I that it was it. never made into a movie, so that's why I never read it. I think they did it the right way. I think they're I think they're doing justice to this story by making it into a series. I think Joe's right. All right. Well, so, there's so much to tell. Let's, so much. We're going to get into the plot first. I'm going to just basically go over the plot of it, um, and we're going to then afterwards we're going to discuss the truths and the fake in regards to this. Um, a lot of fake. Because there's a lot of people who read this book and thought, oh, my God, it's true. Mm -hmm. You can look them up. Um, But uh, renowned Harvard symbologist Robert Langdon is invited to give a lecture at the United States Capitol, which he does, at the invitation apparently from his mentor, a 33rd degree Mason named Peter Solomon. (laughs) If that ain't freaking, I mean, come on. He used the word Solomon in there. All right. Um, who is the head of the Smithsonian Institution. Solomon has also asked him to bring a small sealed package, which he has entrusted to Langdon years earlier. They don't know what this is yet. You find out later. But um, when Langdon arrives at the Capitol, however, he learns that the invitation he received was not from Solomon, but from Sil- Solomon's kidnapper, Malak. M-A-L apostrophe A-K-H. Malak. Yeah, cool. I'd go with that. Um, posing as Solomon's assistant, who has left Solomon's severed right hand in the middle of the Capitol Rotunda mm. in a recreation of the Hand of Mysteries. We will talk about the Hand of Mysteries Something once like we... That. Yeah. So right basically on. like this. Um, Moloch uh, then contacts Langdon, charging him to find both the Mason's Pyramid, which Mason's... Uh, which Masons believe is hidden somewhere in Washington, D.C., and the lost word, lest Solomon be murdered. So the lost word. Mm-hmm. You learn about that in the third degree, mm-hmm. um, how the the true word of God, I think it was, right, was lost uh, be, with the, the death. Name, yep. The true the name, name of God, God yep. was lost with uh, <clears throat> the death of um, Grandmaster Hiram. Hiram. Grandmaster Hiram. Yeah. Sorry, 
blanked out. It's all right. No, that happens to me all the time. It's July. We're on Masonic vacation. Yeah, so it's very hot up here, game. too. Yeah. It's very hot up here, yeah. too, yes. Um, Langdon meets Anoa Sato. Anoa Sato. N-I-N-O-U-E. Sato, the head of the CIA's Office of Security. Sato claims that Moloch poses a threat to national security of the U.S. and that his capture is more important than Peter's rescue, although he refu- or she refuses to elaborate. Examining Solomon's hand, they discover a clue leading to the Solomon's Masonic altar in a room in the Capitol sub-basement where they find a small period lacking a capstone with an inscription carved on it. So this is where in the little trailer you seen they were down in those like cavern areas. It was actually in the book. It was a chamber of reflection. Correct. Which they noticed there was uh, a breeze, if you will, coming through one of the... What, right, mm, that's a typical plot device. It was Secret a room. It was a false wall. Yeah. yeah, and they found this pyramid missing the capstone. Cool. Um, he then confronts Langdon with a security X-ray taken of his bag when he enters the Capitol, which reveals a smaller pyramid in the package Langdon brought in response to the request by his kidnapper, posing as Solomon's assistant. So clearly, the smaller pyramid is the capstone. The capstone. Yeah. We did have a spoiler alert, right? We did have a spoiler okay. alert. Yes, I did. And not uh, for nothing, the book came out in 2000. It came out in 2009. Yeah, so Read a book. <laughs> Get out from under your rock. <laughs> it's not our fault. Uh, Langdon explains that he is unaware of the contents, but Sato, refusing to believe it, attempts to take Langdon into custody. I don't know why she would take him into custody over... I did, That's one part I didn't get in the book. She took him into custody over a little... Obstruction of well, justice you know, or something. Here's the other piece of, of it, too. The CIA has zero law enforcement powers. Zero. So it Correct. would be the FBI that would be doing that, not right. the CIA. Hmm. That was one of the Correct. inconsistencies in the story. Correct. Um, Langdon explains that he was unaware of its contents, but Sato, refusing to believe it, attempts to take Lim to custody before she can arrest him. However, um, she and Anderson are assaulted by Warren Bellmay, an architect of the Capitol and a free the architect of the Capitol and a Freemason, who then flees with Langdon into the confusion. He later explains to Langdon that he, too, has been contacted by Moloch and wants Langdon's assistance rescuing Peter. Excuse me. Um, and wants Langdon's assistance in rescuing Peter. Yes. Yeah, so this guy, Bellmay, wants to help find Peter, another mason. Yeah, and the architect of the Capitol is not the person that, like, drew up the designs and, and built no. it. It's, it's, it's like a, the guy who does it's renovations. It's a position. Yes, yeah, he okay. is in charge. He is, like, in essence, like the Temple Corporation of the Capitol. Correct. Building. Okay. He Take coordinates it. any... Uh, renovations any uh construction work or anything he handles that he didn't actually design okay. it. i just wanted to throw that out. yeah i was wondering thank about you for that. clarifying that because i didn't get that um so anyway then they go into moloch uh he's revered uh, excuse me moloch is reve- revealed to be a freemason with tattoos covering almost his entire body the way that the book and i got to give dan brown credit for this and the way he described the tattoos of moloch was awesome yes he had uh, basically the 33rd degree um, eagle, twin eagles, all yep. across his entire back. His legs were Jaken and Boaz. Okay. He had uh, the crown of yep. the Knights Templar on his head. Like, he was littered in tattoos. And the way he described it, he was very detailed with it. And I'm like, I want that. Yeah. This, why I'm is, really looking forward to see how they portray that in the show. Oh, it's going to be this so Malik, uh, They kind of showed it in the trailer, but it was very... Yeah, you know, he's like the villain. He's the it. villain. He's the bad guy. Is he actually a 33rd degree? Well, in the so I wanted story. to cover this, and it's not okay. covered in this plot here thing. So he, at some point, there's a guy. I, th- I think they, he does a, um, what is it called when you look back in time? Uh, retrospective. Retrospective. Yeah. They do a retrospective chapter where I believe it was um, Peter Solomon met with Moloch, and, or a reporter or something along those lines met with Moloch. And she noticed that he had a 33rd degree certificate, if you will, like we get, on his wall. And uh, Well, 33rd ex- we don't get. <laughs> no, when you become a 33rd, you right. get a 33rd yeah, certificate. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was explained when he explained, I think it was a reporter in the book. Again, I haven't read the book in years, but mm-hmm. I'm kind of recalling as I'm listening to this. Um, the... He had said that he made large monetary he contributions. Bought his way into it, yeah. He bought oh, his way into it. Which oh, you can't do shame that. on Dan Brown. Yeah. You cannot do that. Well, <laughs> he doesn't know any better. No, like, I know. He admittedly is. Well, not he a Mason. he 
does no. know better in certain regards because he did right. spend a lot of time with Masons and like yeah, your, your Brett Morrison's. Your but on the flip side of it, though, yeah. he's also an author. Right, he needs to embellish right. certain and things. He also he, has and he also has to make to fit a story. He has to yep. make Moloch look like a bad guy. What better you way to make somebody going, look like yeah. a bad guy than to have him buy his buy way into something? Well, and, it, yeah, and here's the society. other slight thing that I give a, you know, uh, you said shame on Dan Brown, but in a, in a certain way, good for Dan Brown because by doing that, he oh. almost delegitimize this guy as yes, a Freemason. Yes, as a Freemason, yes. So Absolutely. it's like, yeah, he's not one of the real, he bought his way in, which makes him illegitimate, oh, right. which necessarily, you know, subconsciously might not make his actions reflect poorly on the craft as a whole because yeah. right. right off the bat, he he's illegitimate. He bought his way in. Yeah, though no, that's the good, good point on that. Yes, he definitely made him look... Um, Should we talk about the fact that, you know, how, how Dan Brown's works have reflected on the craft or promoted the craft or should we wait until later we'll wait till later let me cover the rest of this this thing here so um basically he's covered in tattoos he infiltrated the organization in order to obtain an ancient source of power which he believes langdon can unlock for him in return for peter solomon's life several chapters also devolve into moloch's history with peter solomon many years earlier earlier peter bequeathed a large sum of inheritance money to his rebellious son zachary who then fled the Solomon household and led a reckless life in Europe until he was arrested and imprisoned in Turkey for smuggling drugs. I believe, stop me if I'm wrong, Joe, but I believe Moloch killed his son and took the money or something like that, right? Or I can't remember if he he did that or if he ends up being the son. Ah! That would be a twist. Um, I can't remember that specific part. I vaguely remember that. In my head, that was the story. Yes. But that was Malik burying his pri- his past life and, and yes, becoming. Yes, I think you're right. I, th- yep. I think I right. could be wrong. Yep. I could absolutely no, be wrong for a long time. pretty positive you're right where Zachary ended up be changing his name, becoming Malik, and uh, was kind of trying to F his dad, if you will. Real quick, uh, hmm. we got a question on here that I just yes. want to answer as we're going through here. Keith Noonan. Uh, cheers, mate. How long does it take to become a 33rd degree? No, there's um, no time stamp. There's no time stamp. It's an honorary degree, and if you it ask. has to be done. It's done by invitation. If yep. you ask for it, You'll you will see. not receive it. Yep. Um, and uh, hopefully, and, you know, if you go back and there's an episode with Jack Farkas, mm-hmm. uh, I want to say it's somewhere around June 2019. These are earlier ones. Um, where... We got as much out of Jack as I think we're ever going to get about the 33rd uh, yeah. degree. What do you say? Uh, he goes, we walk down the street. We're wearing our tuxedos. Yeah, it's like, and and then, and then, uh, there's yeah, we cross thing, traffic. Then, we yeah. wave some people. And I'm like, you didn't tell us shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's really good at that. But which we is have, fine. Which uh, is fine. Who I'm trying to get on a, uh, uh episode sometime in August is uh, Worshipful Brother Bob First, who has recently been invited uh, to become a 33rd Degree, oh. uh, Scottish Rite Mason, and I believe it's sometime in August or September that he's going out to Cleveland, and that's where the ceremony is taking place. So, congratulations! Hopefully, brother. he can tell that. us a little bit about at least the invitation uh, piece of it if he's allowed to. Right. So, yeah. there's no set time. It's when they det- when they deem that you're ready um, or worthy or yeah. worthy. That's that's probably that's a better uh, better word. Um, they'll invite you. It's an honorary degree. Yes. This is the way that I've always heard it described. All right, so let's get back into this here. Peter flew to Turkey but decided to have Zachary extradited in the week's time instead of getting him released immediately in order to teach him a lesson. Zachary was apparently murdered by his cellmate who got his hands on Zachary's fortune and fled to the island of Syros in Greece to lead a luxurious life under the name Andros Darios. Darios, however soon grew tired of his life apparently having spoken with zachary about solomon's life as a mason darius broke into solomon's home to find the pyramid but accidentally killed peter's mother isabel and was in turn shot and left to fall into a frozen river by vengeful solomon wow the repeated use of the word apparently tells me that our theory or my recollection is correct yep Mm -hmm. Uh, Surviving the fall, Darius nursed himself back to health, covered his scars and eventually his entire body with tattoos Hmm. and set off on a mission to infiltrate the Freemasons and gain access to their secrets, adopting the name Moloch. 
Uh, all right. And I also believe, if I remember correctly, you know, touching on all of his tattoos, mm-hmm. we talked about the 33rd degree of the crown. Yep, yep. If I remember correctly, the very last one that he received was the word. Was I thought it was the the point within the circle. <sighs> Again, it's been a long time. That would be a cooler plot. Device. I think it was the word, but it was wrong. He didn't have the word, and the Maybe. word was still hidden at the end of the story. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll yeah, see, we'll see we'll, what they say. Yeah. As Langdon deals with the events into which he has been thrust, Moloch destroys the Smithsonian-sponsored laboratory of Dr. Catherine Solomon, Peter's younger sister, where she was conducted experiments in noetic science. Ooh. Which, by the way, that's... Uh, uh, noetic science? Noetic science is a science that was founded by a brother no, who well. is uh, also an astronaut. I believe his name was Edwin Mitchell. Oh, I, Edwin could, Mitchell. Okay. Is that... Is that is well, that right? I, I know that he was a mason and he was an astronaut. Yes, I didn't know that's that definitely he who it is. founded this so thing. So he founded this... What is it? Uh, noetic noetic science? science? Um, so, cool little sidebar story on Edwin Mitchell. Hmm. He was on, in, uh, on the Apollo 14... Like mission, I believe, somewhere, yeah, somewhere like around there. Um, I could be off by very a religious missions. man too. Very religious call. man, and he conducted some unofficial experiments when he was on the moon um, regarding ESP to people back on Earth. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that about him. And at all. apparently had this epiphany that there was this cosmic connection where he could, in fact, relay his thoughts and ideas through this cosmic connection hmm. to people on earth like he conducted his own experiments and he had this this great epiphany where once he came back he found this noetic science which in essence tries to link science and human consciousness okay. and, and the soul for lack of a better oh, term. okay. So that kind of like unifying theory of yeah, right. yes and in right. essence he's trying to use science to prove the existence of a soul and things like that. And as you get into the story, like the, um, this uh, Catherine Solomon, I think you said the mm-hmm. woman's name was. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. One of the plots in there, she's trying to measure the weight of a soul and actually has somebody who's on their yeah. deathbed on a scale. Mm-hmm. And when they expire, hmm. there's like a .01 gram, milligram difference in their weight. Hmm. Once they expire. It's actually true. That's actually been and proven by science. Yeah, so that's what this noetics is. Creepy. Uh, the one thing that's inaccurate is the the uh, place that this Institute of Noetic Science does is not in D.C. It's actually somewhere in California. I forget uh-huh. exactly where, but it does exist. And that's one cool thing that I like about Dan Brown novels. Little in the very beginning, reality. they they tell you right away: here are the facts. Yeah. This organization yeah. exists. This person did this. Right. This person did that. Um, Okay. So it kind of gives you a, hey, this isn't total fiction. There's some basis Kernel. of reality basis there. Kernel. But yeah, again, yeah. he wants to sell books and, and right. entertain. That's uh-huh. his job. Yep. So he tweaks things a little bit. But it does. the Institute does exist. It's just in California, not in D.C. Right. So uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit um, just so we can get past this. But Keith he, Noonan added the, the point within the circle is the final tattoo. Oh, okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Always like that one. Um, Love that one. So I we're going to, uh, I'm going to fast forward up here because this is pretty cool because eventually Moloch gets his hands on Langdon and he places him into an airtight sensory deprivation tank oh. uh, where he's interrogates, oh, where he interrogates Langdon by slowly filling the tank with liquid. Um, he's able to convince Langdon to decipher the code at the pyramid's base, but continues to fill the tank until Langdon apparently drowns and dies. Dude, and I up. think that goes back, if you go back to Da Vinci Code or one of the earlier ones, I think there's a story that they go to Langdon's childhood where he might be deaf in one ear due to some kind of mm-hmm. drowning incident. Or That's exactly right. right. Because what so. they do is when he's in the, I remember in the book, when he's in the tank and it starts filling with water, he goes into a full on panic, like starts freaking yeah, out. Because he's having flashbacks to when he was a but kid. But what you later discover is that apparently there's oxygenated water that even if it gets into your lungs, you don't die. You still, you can still, in a sense, be oxygenated 
you. F- I mean, you're drowning, but there's still you're oxygen drowning. You can't going breathe, but your, there's yeah. you're not getting the oxygen oxygen deprivation right. part of the right. drowning. So you're not going brain dead. You're just correct. You right. just can't physically right. breathe. dead. <laughs> um, you're not dead. Dead. You're just as you're for just the can't respirate. Wow, now yeah, that's messed up, man. That's horrible. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. freaking terrible. Uh, well, I'm I mean, note. I guess if you want to have a near-death experience, that's the place to do it. That's yeah. the way to do it. Let's but not give our listeners any ideas. No, 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 no. Don't, please, please, do not. Well, the Free Nations podcast does not condone any. And this deprivation <laughs> chamber comes into play with some real government um, experiments that right. were done in the '60s by mm-hmm. the CIA in mm-hmm. regards to remote viewing. That's what these yeah. deprivation chambers were used for. So that's yep. right. that part is actually. And the KGB, True, that they KGB exist. was way into that crap. Yes. Dude, I don't even want to talk about some of the experiments and stuff that they did. You see the one where they kept people awake, the Russians. Oh yeah, oh, God, yeah. yeah. Oh, now we know God. what happens. It's not pretty. <sighs> anyway, um, let's go back into this. So then, eventually, Moloch uh, ties Catherine to a chair and inserts an open-ended transfusion needle into her arm and leaves her to bleed to death. Then flees with a weakened wheel bound. Wheelchair bound Solomon to the temple room of the Scottish Rites House of the Temple, which I've um, been. In. I've been there too. It's it's very it's a it's very cool. cool place. All made it's out of my, marble. It's on my list. I definitely oh, yeah. need to be need to get out there. If you're a Mason. This is definitely bucket yeah. list level number one. Yep. And it's the, it's the the um, the temple is actually designed after. And I'm going to get the name wrong, but it's like a Greek temple mausolee or, or something like that, which gave root to the, the term mausoleum. It mm. was like the first mausoleum because mm. you do actually have, I want to say there's two brothers in tomb there, uh, Pike and somebody else. And I can't remember who the second person is for the life of me. Mm. But I want to say there's two brothers. There's one person in addition to Pike. And right. even in the in the book, like Langdon comes face to face with that that Pike bust. That's in the the mm-hmm. landing of one of the staircases yeah. that I've seen, and it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. But yeah, it's one thing that people don't realize that that uh, temple in uh, D.C. is actually a mausoleum, and yeah. and Pike's uh, remains are actually somebody there. else is there mm-hmm. too. I think. Yeah, there's definitely a second person. I just can't I can't think remember of the freaking life of me who is. So uh, let's fast forward a little bit here. Uh, eventually, what happens is Langdon comes back to uh, Catherine gets away. Moloch takes off to the um, House of the Temple where he threatens to release a heavily edited video showing government officials performing secret Masonic rituals. The same video that Sado, Sado showed to Bellame, uh, which without content appears highly disturbing. Well, of course it does. Now, if I, if mm. I can comment on that piece of it a little yeah. bit. So in the book, it, it's described um, some of it is accurate. Um, mm-hmm. The person dressed in a certain way, yep. surrounded by brothers in regalia and sashes and aprons and, and whatnot. Um, I mean, we've talked about it before on the podcast, like about, you know, what if an outside stranger came up and witnessed what was happening in the tragedy of the third degree? Right. They'd be like, oh, what the hell? Yeah. Right. And I, <laughs> but without context. Right. Yeah. And and I yep. think in, in I, God, I want to I forget whether it's Da Vinci Code or Angels and Demons, but Langdon is given a lecture where he describes, you know, on the uh, the pagan day of the sun god, we all get together and, and celebrate uh, the our deity in um, what does he call it? A, a, cerium, a ceremonial cannibalism, which mm-hmm. is describing the Catholic mass where you go and partake in the, on Sunday. Communion. I want to say that's angels and, the, and demons, the body and blood of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say that's angels. And I want to say too. Mm. So yeah, without context, it, it, yeah, without it context, sounds, it, it sounds horrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but <coughs> the ritual, and I, I did some research on this earlier today when I was doing my refresher, the ritual that's described in the book is an actual ritual. However, it's from a, a rogue group of Scottish Rite Masons, and I want to say it's Sir No, C-I-R-N-E-A-U, um, that performed, that kind of went out on their own uh, and had their own rituals outside of the official Scottish Rite rituals mm-hmm. um, where there was part of the ceremony that's described in the book of, of drinking wine, which is emblematical of blood mm-hmm. from a skull. Mm-hmm. Right. So two responses from the Freemasons. On Vikings. That. Skull. First, first and foremost. Okay. So what if it's true? You're drinking right. wine out of a, out of a 
symbolic skull. It's not like mm-hmm. it's a real skull. Like so, so what? Yeah, in context, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Number two, um, there was some kind of expose written on this. Sp- Specific mm-hmm. Sir No mm-hmm. branch of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. I forget when it was. I think it was Blanchard in 1887. That sounds about yeah. right. Yeah, sensationalist um, anti Mason. Have you guys ever seen the meme? Though? It was definitely yeah. right a, yeah. uh, about that around so that time. And it, a lot of it they pulled from that. I so imagine. that's what Dan Brown pulled from yep. was this expose on this rogue branch of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Is it factual? All it is, but it is not part of the traditional <laughs> or quote unquote standard. Accepted. So you're yeah. talking Scottish about the right preface ritual. of the book is what you're talking. You're talking about in the introduction of the preface of the book. You remember it's where the very Moloch of the book. was yes. going through yeah. uh, okay, yes. yes. And he was going through a ceremony where the thirty third degree. And ceremony. I want to be clear about this. We're not thirty third Masons, right. but the skull is in a degree that me and you have taken. Right. So yeah, yeah. what but what that, that piece, Dan Brown did was he took he, he took, he a, took something and romanticized it for this right. guy. He took something that was like a fringe rogue yep. group of Freemasonry and mm. presented it as that's what happens. Right. Why? Because it's a better story yeah. than probably right. what normally happens in that degree. It's and the Blanchard expose does have that in it, George. So, yeah. yes, it is part yes. of sort of, you know, there's... there's kind of we got a wasp in the house. But yeah, no, no, all of that ritual, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the ritual that they showed in that, or he, that he wrote into that particular scene from that came, expose. From that, came from that expose. Exactly. Right. So, let's get back into this and we'll finish this up and then we'll talk about the truths and myths of, of what's going on here. So, Moloch forces the word, the unpronounceable circumpunct, out of Peter. That's right. Right, circumpunct. Mm-hmm. The blue word. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, the I'm unpronoun- sure what it means, but... My guess I'm going to click on it in a minute. So My guess it's the point within the circle. Uh, yeah. Right? A fancy word yes, for right. point within the circle. Omnipotent, yep. basically. Um, out of Peter in... Oh, let's see here. Uh... Moloch forces the word, the unpronounceable circumpunct, out of Peter and tattoos it on his head on the last portion of the unmarked skin of his body. Moloch then orders Peter to sacrifice him as he believes that his destiny is to become a demonic spirit and lead the forces of evil. Okay. I mean, that's something to aspire to, I guess. Uh, Just want to say, this is a freaking Masons don't aspire to that. Yeah, that wasp is like freaking me out. I yeah. wish he would just land somewhere and, like, hang out. Yeah, build a nest or some crap. Or so, fly uh, out the friggin' window. That'd be yeah. cool, too. So, I just want to be clear about something. <sighs> You're not going to tattoo anything on your body that's going to turn you into a demonic spirit that's going to... And on top of that, Masons aren't demonic, damn it. Why do I got to keep saying this? No, I feel no, like no. This Why do like, you have to keep saying that? Because there are some people YouTube that videos. actually freaking believe <laughs> yeah. that. Like, yeah. <sighs> whatever. It makes if it I were a demon, it makes a good story. It makes a good story. It makes a good TV show. Right. Um, um, yeah. Demons aren't scared of wasps, I'm just saying. So, That's a good point. If, if we're like, yeah, yeah wasp, I'm, we're like, oh, no, we just burn that. If we were demons, and I'm, like, I'm looking all over this room. Make sure, oh, get him, spider. There's a spider in the corner. Oh, go, oh, go, get in the, oh, get in the go, way. Go, come on, Mother Nature, go, 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 go. Didn't work out. Yeah, this is freaking me out. I'm not gonna lie, overhead. I'm gonna keep trying. He'll get caught up in that web. So um, we're at 43 minutes. We could end it early. When Peter claims that he will do so without hesitation to avenge his son and mother, Moloch shocks Peter by revealing that he's actually Zachary Solomon himself. Having conspired with the prison warden to fake his death by disfiguring the body of another inmate being beyond recognition. Very Count of Monte Cristo, one of my favorite books written by... A Freemason. So mm-hmm. let me just go out and say right here. We're going to call it this son of a bitch that? is like Dumas? right here. I can't remember. Was it Dumas? No, Alexander it was Dumas? Alexander Dumas sounds correct. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say a couple things. This could oh, not be. He went out the window. He went out the window. Yay! Oh, oh, hooray! Hooray! Shut the window. Yeah. Oh, I was sweating more than I should be. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a big like son a of a bitch too. <laughs> yeah, it was a scary looking wasp. Oh, wait. I, and I have an interesting tidbit, but finish your thing. But, I hope but it didn't have anything to do with a hooker in no, church. No, it had to do with what the hand was pointing up to. Oh, okay. Um, no, I just want to say, just uh, getting back into um, faking your death and everything. Yeah, in, if, if this is 2009, even in 2009, they did have... Tupac. 
Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. No. Tupac faked his death. No, he did. Oh, not God. in 2009. No, but there is DNA at the ba- you know. So you're assuming that the book he wrote is in quote unquote it, you know, when the book came out, right? Right, right. You're right. assuming it's modern times, so 2009. They had DNA. Yeah, yeah you but know nobody what I mean? was looking. Nobody was looking. But I'm just them. saying, it'd be very impossible to fake your death and bash the skull out of the, or bash the face up or disfigure another inmate. Because what they're going to do is they're just going to run a DNA test or a blood test and realize, oh shit, that wasn't him. If they look. Mm, if the, all right. Right. Yeah. If look they, at the Count of Monte Cristo. If they care enough to do it. Right. All right. They just, anyway, I'm just at, saying. Look at. Um, There's a little source of fiction uh, right there. That it's not, you can't just the bash. Bin Laden. Never mind. Yeah, but it makes a good story. <laughs> Makes for a good story. Could you stop? <laughs> um, We're not supposed to be like perpetuating conspiracy theories. I'm just saying. Catherine and Bellamy discover several photos of yeah. Zachary in Greece after he supposed after his supposed death that show his gradual transformation into Moloch. With tears in his eyes, Peter prepares to stab Zachary, and, but ultimately cannot bring himself to do so. Drops the knife just as Langdon arrives and tackles him. Hmm. I'd have shanked that song, bitch. Like that reminds me of the. Yeah. Uh, you put me of... underwater. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not gonna tackle him. I'm gonna be like, oh, get the knife. Just... Well, you know, he's supposed to be he's this like ripped. super good guy character. He's getting like, ribbed, and then I'm and, sh- and then I'm prison yeah. wallet. You say it. that, and all I have in my head is that <laughs> scene from uh, the Golden Child with Eddie Murphy, where he's got the I I I I got the knife. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that part? Yeah. I could see that fitting into this plot line nicely. I would tackle him, then take the knife, be like, you tried to drown me, you son of a... And then just just give him a couple of quick jabs in the rib cage and then keister it. So we've got Keep some uh, comments here real quick. Imagine if Dan Brown was on the podcast from Herbert Nelson. Josh McRae says, Herbert, mm-hmm. that would be awesome. We should start a letter writing campaign. Oh, Raff. That's Raff. what we'll need. Raff for to get Do on. Do your job. I'll reach out. I'll Do try to reach job. out to him too. Um, it might, we might have to pull some money from the trustees, but... We might right. be able to get it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's just keep going forward Or we here. can start a campaign on Patreon where as little as $5 a month, mm-hmm. you can be a member and get exclusive access to Patreon content, Discord channels, and you're the ever-elusive Gold Tone Freemasons podcast. Which, by the way, we owe some people. What pins? Are, uh, how are we doing with pins? We got, uh, that's Raph's department we now. We got a slew of people. That's Raph's department now. God damn you, Raph. Mm-hmm. Let me know if we need to order more. I can just reach out, but I need some right. some funding. In um, addition, by joining, you would be funding our attempt to get Mr. Dan Brown yes. on the Freemasons so, podcast. And go to Charles Island. Also that. We need Which my daughter rubbed it in my face that she actually walked to Charles Island. You mm. know what? Screw her. She's in good shape. <laughs> we would die. I'm sorry. I can't say that. She's 15 or whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hannah, what are you sorry. saying? Can get halfway, but I can't make it. Yeah, dude. I would probably <laughs> stroke out about a quarter of the way there. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I haven't been running lately. I did eight miles last weekend. I well, oh. I mean, okay, yeah. So Joe would make. It. I've got nine coming this weekend. George and I would die. You would have to drag us the rest of the way, and then you'd probably. That die I don't know because what of I that. Do. Yeah. The CIA. You then, maybe George. Huh? <laughs> yeah. He's he's small, but he's dense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the? What do you mean by that? <laughs> You're dense, husky. Dense You're up here. Right. Husky. If he had corduroys, they'd go <laughs> yeah. dense like a new shirt size is a medium husky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I apologize to your daughter. Uh, the CIA. She is, she she is, is my favorite. favorite of your Yeah, days. she is yeah. our favorite. Uh, the yeah. CIA. Sorry, George. Oh wait, wait, wait. So oh, so I want to talk about this here. Uh, Director Sato arrives at the temple in a helicopter, which smashes the temple skylight in shards, which fatally impales Zachary. So a couple fun facts. Yes. About. Um, the uh, Oculus. There actually is an Oculus in the House of the Temple. So, whereas above our lodges, when we have the altar, yeah. we, there's actually a there's light. That hole. Right, and it over no, no, it no, shines no. on the the, uh, the altar. And there's the, no hole. The there's no light. There's literally it's a skylight. A it's a Oculus. Yeah, call traditionally, it. Oculus. traditionally, yeah. it's just a hole in yeah. the ceiling mm-hmm. yeah, at the apex of. So the apparently. Dome. I don't remember if this is true or not, but I oh, think I remember at, my fun. Fact at one forgot. point, it used to be open. I believe it was it was an open that I air. don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I, like remember, in, I know in it's tour a guide now, but in Athens they were always open. Correct. But I think it was actually open at one point, and some freaking idiot jumped from yeah, the oh. Oculus and landed and broke his legs. I think I remember the tour guide telling me that. Uh, for anybody who can, who is a Scottish Rite Mason, 
or any Mason who's been to the House of the Temple, can you please confirm nor deny that story? But I believe that's something the tour guide said. You know, somebody always does something stupid, like pouring yeah. hot coffee in their crotch or jumping in through <laughs> there, a freaking Oculus. There's like, a come reason on, why. There's a reason come why on. an owner's manual from 1980. Oh, yeah. Cody had, had it gap the spark plugs, and now it tells you not to drink the water yeah. out of the battery. Yeah. Like there, there's a reason why. I that love that. I love that one. Idiots. Oh. Or I think it was adjust the timing. I might be No, old. it was like adjust the valves. But I, I yes. Yeah, adjust the but valves. But I, I could gap a spark plug. I used to do that yeah. on my old Malibu. Yeah. Well, they, they don't, don't do it no more now. Either way, they don't expect gap. you to do it now. Now I gap other things. we got to do it on our tractor and our lawnmowers, though. So, uh, I'm ignoring men. you. <laughs> so, uh,. Anyway, uh, the CIA the CIA then thwarts Zachary's plan to transmit the video by several leading media channels using an EMP blast. Uh, okay, Disa- disabling a cell tower in the network path, leading to Zachary's laptop computer. Catherine arrives, arrives, does a teary eyed, mushy scene there, and mushy. then at the end there, uh, Peter tells Lang that I'm going to skip forward here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to. S- Later, Peter informs Langdon that the circumpunk Zachary tattooed on his head is not the word. He also informs Catherine that he made backups of all her noetic research data in his own computer, meaning the rear, her research can continue. Deciding to take Langdon to the true secret behind the word, Peter leads him to a room atop the Washington Monument and tells him that the word, a common Christian Bible, the word of God, lies in the monument's cornerstone buried in the ground beneath the monument's staircase. What? Langdon realizes that the word inscribed in the base of the aluminum capstone, Masonic period, and this is true. Yes, there, there is a, an aluminum capstone on the top of the Washington Monument, and there's something engraved in it that I... Laus Deo. Which translates to praise God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Peter tells Langdon that the Masons believe in the Bible is an esoteric is. What? Let me try this again. Peter tells Langdon that the Masons believe that the Bible is an esoteric allegory written by humanity and that most religious texts around the globe, it contains veiled instructions for harnessing humanity's nature, natural godlike qualities similar to Catherine's noetic research and is not meant to be interpreted as the commands of an all powerful deity. Mm, that's some gospel of Thomas. So there yeah there's no there's some <laughs> definitely like some it. stuff in there yeah. and and yeah. there's and I I I can't say that all of Freemasonry believes that that's the case. No. There there, there yeah. are some parts that do and there's a, a part in uh, in in reference to Christ and I again I, I don't know specifically where it is. Yes. And just add that Masons will never force you to believe that. No, they yeah, absolutely. They and the founding fathers and, and a lot of things that come up in this book um, I think it actually touches on the fact that most of the founding fathers were deists, mm-hmm. that they believed in some supreme being but did not endorse one particular religion or God. Which works out pretty well with masonry because we kind it of goes embrace. Hand in hand, right? Yeah, we don't promote, but we kind of embrace the value system of all of the world's religions, or at least the commonalities mm-hmm. between all of them, right? But I mean, somewhere in, in the New Testament, it states something to the effect of an going to paraphrase and somebody fact check this and find out exactly where it is but i know it's there where it said something to the effect that god became man so that man can become god referring to christ becoming mortal man so that man can become god and then that gets back to the whole it was popular uh, around the time of the founding of freemasonry where um, you could achieve godlike qualities, and that's where that whole apotheosis of Washington mm-hmm. comes mm-hmm. into play yep. in the Capitol building, and that's what mm-hmm. the Hand of Mysteries is pointing to right. in the beginning of that book. Funny sidebar thing that this is my funny fact about the apotheosis of George Washington. He's surrounded by 13 virgins. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. The artist mm-hmm. needed 13 models that would do it for really cheap. Okay. He went out and actually got 13 prostitutes to model <laughs> nice. as the 13 virgins. Hey, is this a Joe story? Or is no, this, a is a, this is a fact. Oh, wow. This I didn't know that. So the 13 virgins around George Washington and the apotheosis of George Washington are all prostitutes. Are hookers. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not. Their like likenesses a, are, are hookers. 
Yeah. And that that was that's well, now that just that's, freaking made it all the rotunda. Now I'm gonna look up next time I get to the Capitol. I'm gonna look up and I'm just gonna see Washington sitting in that chair and just hear they see me rolling. Right, right. Yeah. He's like the Godfather. Yeah, Washington's rolling dirty. Remember Catch the Godfather from dirty. 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 Pimpin' Ain't Easy? Like that's that's. But that no, that's that's a that's a fact. That is actually true. Um, but yeah, that whole concept of. Um, Should have painted him with God became man, on. so that man man became God. Um, Old ones. <laughs> My apotheosis is so bright. I need sunglasses. But if you think about, <laughs> sorry, continue. No, but when you talk about, you know, certain rituals in Freemasonry and uh, a rebirth of sorts, and you know, getting to a higher plane, you can you could bring in some of the ancient mysteries and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot that says that. You know, God is within you. You can yep. tune yourself. It, it, it is said that God made us in his likeness. Right. Yep. Um, so in essence, he made us at least with the potential of becoming God-like. Yeah. And that's what this guy, Malik, kind of bastardized and twisted. He wanted the God-like powers, but in his mind it was become this demon yep. type person versus uh uses powers for evil a beneficent yeah and that's not like incompatible with freemasonry um but i would yeah so it's not something that we promote but it's not incompatible with freemasonry so if you want to be a deist and believe that you know god is within you so yeah. I'm going to go over a couple quotes that are actually in this book. But first one, Herbert Nelson says, the original pimp grill was made of wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn right. Cherry, too. Hey, man, cheap labor. <laughs> Cherry, the best of woods. Mm. Uh, mm. But uh, so let's go over some of some quotes here. And this is actually, this is a good one that I've seen. Um, you guys were kind of just going back and forth what you were talking about here. But it says, uh, one of the quotes in the book was... Um, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't give me a chapter, but it says, uh, the only difference between you and God is that you have forgotten you are divine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a powerful quote. Yeah. That's crazy. And think about that quote in relation to some of the things from her, not necessarily Freemasonry, but the ancient mysteries of Hermes right. Trismegistus and the Kabbalion and, and mm-hmm. the, I want to say, right in the prologue of... Um, this book it mentions Manly P. Hall's uh, God Secrets for All Ages. I, I know I'm butchering the um, the name of that, but I know we ha- I think we have the book somewhere in the, right in the, in the room behind yeah. us. The, the Secret Mysteries of All Ages, oh. or the Secret Something of All Ages. This is a perfect. I, I'm actually going to read a little excerpt from the br- book, um, and this I think is perfect for what we've been talking about the last couple of times and everything. But this is actually in the book, so. Uh, it says, uh, Professor Langdon called a young man with curly hair in the back row. If masonry is not a secret society, not a corporation, and not a religion, then what is it? Well, if you were to ask a mason, he would offer the following definition. Masonry is a system of morality, veiled in allegory, and illustrated by symbols. Mm-hmm. Sounds to me like a euphemism for freaky cult. <laughs> freaky cult, you say? Hell yes, the kid said, standing up. I heard what they do inside their secret buildings. Weird candlelight rituals with coffins and nooses and drinking wine out of skulls. Now that's freaky. Langdon scanned the classroom. Does that sound freaky to anyone else? Yes, they all chimed in. Langdon feigned a a sad sigh. Too bad. If that's too freaky for you, then I know you'll never want to join my cult. Silence settled over the room. The students from the Women's Center looked uneasy. You're in a cult? Langdon nodded and lowered his voice uh, to a conspiratorial whisper. Don't tell anyone, but on the pagan day of the sun god Ra, I kneel on the floor of an ancient instrument of torture and consume ritualistic symbols of blood and flesh. The class looked horrified. Mm -hmm. Langdon shrugged. And if any of you care to join me, you can come to the Harvard Chapel on Sunday, kneel beneath yep. the crucifix, and take the Holy Communion. Yep. The classroom re- re- remained silent. Langdon winked. Open your minds, my friends. We all fear what we do not understand. Yep. And that's the exact quote, that, quote. I w- that we were trying to figure Perfect. out before. Yep. Um, when I mentioned it, we thought it might have been from Angels and Demons. But no, it, it's from Perfect. this book. Because I, I, I remember that specifically, and that's... You know, kind of uh, when we had our naysayers and, and haters attempt uh, at dialogue 
last podcast, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's one of the things oh, that was one awesome. of the examples that I mentioned. It's like, yeah, so it it's all about context. It's yep. all about um, how you perceive things. And, and not only that, but how it's presented to you. Mm-hmm. That so is perfect. And the meaning Powerful. behind the symbol. So I want to go back a little <laughs> bit. Um, if we can, we were talking about the, in, the, the, the hand of mysteries. Yes. The hand of mystery. So what exactly is the hand of mysteries? The, how are we doing, Ken? Are we good for time or? Yeah, we're, uh, exactly an hour. Uh, let, let it ride. Let, let it ride. That's fine. We're a good conversation here. Um, so the, the, the hand of mysteries is a bunch of different symbols. Um, yes. it is not, I repeat, not Masonic. In mm-hmm. any way, shape, or form. We do not talk about the Hand of Mysteries. It's not in any of our rituals. It's not in any of our... Um, uh, I mean, Masons get all kinds of tattoos and stuff like that. It is related so to the ancient mysteries. It's related to the ancient mysteries, but not specifically ancient Freemasonry. Ancient mysteries have influenced parts of Freemasonry, mm-hmm. but there's not a direct connection. Correct. To the correct. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think it's cool. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have uh, Alex DeFranzo... Or, uh, our, our, our Alex Dominus, our, Alex Dominus, thank you. Our, uh, our resident Morning Star Lodge number 47 Master Mason tattooist. I'm gonna get that. That's what I want on my hand right here. Boom. What the hand of mystery on your hand? I want my the hand of mystery on my hand. Well, well it's ironic. It, Why is it ironic? It ironic. Know. You know, what you can't use the hand for anymore then. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, <laughs> you know. You know, it'd right. be disrespectful. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're gonna put that on your hand, that that <laughs> hand is no longer in use for you know, certain activities. <clears throat> we should have ended right at one hour. See, I'm being very good. I haven't sworn. I haven't said no. anything bad at all. And then here's Joe, it's been downright scholarly, talking about playing with a spider monkey. <laughs> well, but it's in the hand of mysteries is more of an alchemical thing. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and it's. Uh, I'm trying to remember what's on the hand of mystery show. You got the image. Yeah, up there I've got it up here. It's so a it's, fish in the palm. It's a it's the alchemical symbol of apotheosis, which we talked about. Yep. George mm-hmm. Washington and the hookers. Correct. Uh, the <laughs> transformation of man into God. George and his gals. Uh, traditionally God. represented by an image of a hand with other symbols, including skulls, crown stars, fish keys, lanterns, astrological symbols, and the all-seeing eye. Right. So, real quick, before we get into the specifics of it, mm-hmm. there is not only is in the um, mural on the Capitol building rotunda of the apotheosis of George Washington. Correct. He's sitting there with his hand with in hand approximately like yep. this position. Mm. But there is also a statue that used to be down in the, the bottom of the Capitol building where the George Washington tomb, the unused tomb, because um, he ended up being entombed in Mount Vernon. Mm-hmm. But initially he was, it was intended for him to be entombed in the Capitol building. Mm-hmm. There was this large marble statue of him half dressed holding a sword in one hand out like this and his hand like this mm. again representing the the apotheosis of <clears throat> George Washington and there are several images of Jesus Christ in this with that, that same hand posture. in the same yeah. position so it's yeah. it's that blurring of the right. man becoming god god becoming man type thing mm. um, but Lovely just looking at the ladies. picture here above the pinky um, appears to be a, a key. Above the ring finger would be, uh, it looks like a lantern. The sun on the middle finger. A uh, six-pointed star on the index finger. Fish in the palm. There's a crown over the thumb, as well as a couple other alchemical symbols on there. Um, but I think it all goes back to, it's specifically tied to the key of Solomon. Uh-huh. which there are certain symbols uh, represented in the Key of Solomon that it depends on... Uh, I'll, I'll just give the generic explanation of it that gets into some of the magic, with a K, that uh-huh. King Solomon performed to control demons that did certain uh-huh. work, such as building the temples. There's that lore, um, and it's an attempt to figure out some of those Keys of Solomon, which... All right come full circle you want to talk about ultimate villains alistair crowley claimed Mm. to have broken the code of the keys of solomon and uh was thus declared a a heretic and a an enemy of the church and 
branded as a, an insane evil person, which some of the things I'm he did were sorry. Kind, no. of, kind of was. You know what? I can believe that right up until you did all kinds of crazy weird shit Correct. on that island in, in Italy. Well, and that's the thing. Like, at some point, you start to believe your own crap, yeah. and that's where the turning point goes. I know you like to think you <laughs> don't stay. Lean a little, little bit closer, closer to see your roses, roses really smell like poo poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> roses uh, really smell just like Just wanted to go back poo-poo. on something on the rotunda. Um, I believe in the book it also said that there was uh, what was it, Joe? Come on, help me out here. It was it was the ceiling had like soot on it. You could still see I remember saying so you could still see the soot because in the center of the where the hand was, there used to actually be a like a like eternal a, flame. Yes, a, a torch. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Right? Yep. And that was actually true. That was, that was actually something. true. Yes. Yeah. I wish I still did that. I mean, um, you got propane and propane accessories now. They could freaking absolutely do that. But do now what now. you'll see is in the center of the rotunda, which is now usually reserved for when they do. Um, There's nothing. It's well, they the, do, when they do um, dignitary funerals and they lay them in state, I think that's done in the rotunda over. Mm-hmm. You'll see what's, where the torch used to be is now a six pointed star. Yeah. Um, that's set in the center there that covers over what the tomb, where the tomb is. Um, and there's nothing in there, right? There's nothing in there. And when you get into this um, chamber of reflection that was supposedly in some of these tunnels and, and underground levels. I think it was SB13, if I remember in the book. That doesn't exist anymore. That area that they referenced in the book mm-hmm. was dug up years ago. Um, to become the visitor center. So there's a visitor center at the Capitol building that everybody must enter oh, through. Really? It kind of goes down a ramp. And, and I do remember the visitor center, but that's where they dug that's up. That's exactly. Make it. They removed a lot of these subfloors that were represented in this book. That's hmm. a shame. To create that portion of it. So could something have existed there? For shame. For shame. Sure. Something could have existed there. Were there so many rooms down? Because... The other piece of it, too, is that a decision was made at some point that the Capitol building was so iconic that they were not going to do any exterior changes to it. So all of the changes in add-ons and renovations went underground. Uh, I want to say there were up to four levels that went underground that contained office buildings, office space for members uh, of Congress, uh, tunnels, some that went directly to the Smithsonian Yep. Um, one that went directly to the Library of Congress. So there were these underground tunnels. I mean, it makes sense, though. Things. Well, yeah. Plus and I would have no problem with them adding on to it as long as you do it in the same style that it was original. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the Capitol building, what we see now, it was it was – it's been changed over the years. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you had the, the, what is it, Lincoln put the, put the um, well, yeah, the, the, the art, dome the, over the dome over it. it. Yeah. Lincoln did that the dome. Because yeah. I think it was still under construction for a long time at that point. But it was, I right. think Truman was the one that did the heaviest renovations on it. And that's when they dug up the foundation of the Capitol building. And that's where they think but he did potentially a- they lost the, the cornerstone. Or they didn't recover the, the corner. Yeah, they didn't lose the freaking. But cornerstone. a lot of the renovations on the Capitol building have taken place underground. How about that, that bank in Boston that found the cornerstone that Revere stuff? Yes, I saw that recently. And you mean to tell me you lost you lost the Capitol one? Yeah. No, they didn't. There's, but that was check your shoes, boys. There's a, there's smell. a theory out there that the reason Boosh. why it had been lost and not known for a long time, and that right. was part of the reason why Truman decided, hey, let's do all these renovations so that he could kind of take a crack at. Well, it. they did the White House too. Remember, they did the White House. You know yeah. what was crazy too is when they re- re- when they renovated the White House, they actually went into they they tore it down to the to the bare outside walls, and they still found the burn marks from when the British burned yes. it down in 1812. Yep. yep. That's crazy. It's pretty neat. And I want to say it was when the Capitol building was renovated that they, that Truman, and it might have been 48 states at that point. I, I don't know mm. for certain if it was 48 Truman? or 50 at that point. No, there was 50 um, at that point. Where he set, like, each Grand Lodge in Connecticut has a stone yeah. with a maker's mark on it. Mm-hmm. Um, that was from that renovation. That was one of the things he did is he sent mm-hmm. a stone to each Grand Lodge um, hmm. that was found during the building of that. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty so cool. kind of, you know, any of the Royal Arch Mark Master Masons that are out there, there, there are stones in each Grand Lodge mm. that contain somebody's master's mark. That's cool. awesome. What do you say, boys? 
wrap it up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think got all together, I've got a quick final thought. Yeah, go ahead. About the fact that, you know, in general, I think. Ken. What? Can I give you the final thought? But there's just one more quote that I've seen that I want to oh, read boy. before you could have the final thought. But I just huh. one more quote that I found well, was I mean, awesome. Usually we all do, but yeah. Uh, imagine how different a world might be if more. This is from the Dan Brown book. This is a quote. Imagine how different the world might be if more leaders took the time to ponder the finality of death before racing off to war. Mm. Yeah. How freaking memento mori. Absolutely. This is a awesome book. That's all I gotta say. It's just, yeah, it's well written for sure. Well written. Go ahead, Ken. So I think altogether, um, what what Dan Brown's done for masonry. I think all publicity is good publicity in a way, right? There's like there, there have been a lot of people, a lot of Masonic critics out there that have said, oh, well, he's painting the craft in a, a less than savory light, and it's making us look bad, and it's hurting our membership. I mean, I don't know to what extent studies have actually been done on what it actually did for our numbers when these books and movies have been released, but mm. I think at the very least, it's getting the message that Freemasonry exists out there. Mm. That we still exist, mm -hmm. that we're mm, still relevant, even if the information isn't necessarily correct, it's literally millions and millions of dollars of free advertising. Yep. Correct. Just to yep. get our name out mm -hmm. there. And if somebody is... That's how I feel about like rappers like Apathy as well as the Widow yeah. Sons. And if, if, if somebody's of good moral character, they're mm -hmm. going to be interested enough to say, hey, I wonder if there's something about this. Right. Right, and if that gets that individual to come to our door, even if there's some chaff along with the wheat, mm -hmm. I think I'm in that camp that says all publicity is good publicity. So I think what Dan Brown did was beneficial to the craft at large. I agree. It here, here. leads to questions. It leads to thought, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it might spark somebody's journey, much like something as simple as this podcast sparked so, so many journeys. So mm -hmm. gets people interested, gets it out there. Agree. Couldn't agree more. And it's entertaining. I'll watch and that show. it's entertaining. I'll watch every freaking episode. Yep. And we show that we're not a craft of old men. We're definitely not a craft of old men. Except for Joe. I knew you were going. <laughs> but he still you looks going. young. <laughs> His hair's not white. He's still little, got hair. A little bit in the beard. Still got hair. Oh, I'll still have hair. I've Genetically, I have a good head of hair. Yeah. I'll be there, too. Hey, Listen. We all have our faults. I'm going bald, so it's fine. That's okay. Right. Yeah. At least you guys have hair. It's one of your faults. Fuckers. Anyway. Uh, I've got more hair on my... Never mind. <laughs> what do we say, brothers? Here we go. Think we, think we did a, <laughs> yeah, a bang-up job? Yeah. I think right. we put the nail in it, yeah. All right. So, uh, for the Freemasons Podcast, I am right Worship Brother George Mudry signing off. Worship Brother Joe signing off. And Worship Brother Ken signing off. Have a good night, everyone. Good Thank night. you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Love you. Konnichiwa. Mm.